What's up everybody? Showtime checking in. I hope you all had a great Halloween. Did you trick or treat? Did you accidentally trip over that insane neighbor lady's cat while trying to get your Tootsie Pop? Or did you just trip out? Did you wear a cool costume or was it absolute shit? All I know is that I had to shore you can a few zombies to the face, my dudes, just to motherfucking be here. Either way, damn it, welcome back to another exciting addition to my homage of Resident Evil Director's Cut. <laughs> Welcome to the mansion of Resident Evil. In the past two parts, I uncovered the game's story, plot twists, and went over the characters of Alpha Team in great detail. Today, in part three, I will kick off the star's secondary unit, Bravo Team, by observing the young and naive Rebecca Chambers, along with the brave and courageous, but stupid, Richard Aiken. Let's go! Rebecca Chambers joined Star's Bravo team as the unit's most inexperienced member, mostly due to her young age of 18, as rear security and medic specializing in pharmaceuticals. She has always had a timid demeanor, lacking confidence around her fellow Star's members as a result. Being a part of the Bravo team, she was one of the first members of Star's to investigate the grisly cannibalistic murders of the Arclay Mountains. There is a long backstory to Rebecca that was mostly created in the prequel, Resident Evil Zero, which stars herself and Billy Cohen, an ex-Marine lieutenant being transferred to a military base for execution just after her helicopter crashes in the Raccoon Forest. Rebecca and Edward Dewey, Bravo Team's primary pilot, get separated from the other members. Edward dies from Cerberus-inflicted injuries, and Rebecca eventually stumbles upon the mansion and falls asleep in a room located in the dormitory. She was discovered by Richard Aiken of Bravo Team, and they both ventured together to find Bravo Team leader Enrico Marini. Richard was a member of Star's Bravo Team, serving as the communications expert, and was put in charge of looking after Rebecca. Richard had a reputation for being the guy with a positive attitude, being cool-headed, and all-around nice guy. He was a part of the party after the initial separation to have stumbled into the mansion, including Forrest, Kenneth, and Enrico. Richard and Rebecca thoroughly searched the various areas of the guardhouse, with no luck finding their leader. They eventually wound up at the second floor east wing of the mansion, where they encountered... The Giant Snake! After Richard was badly bitten and poisoned by the snake, fortunately Rebecca was able to get in some pot shots to temporarily fend off the Ravages Viper. Unfortunately, Richard was left a wreck and in critical life condition. This is when Chris Redfield of Alpha Team comes across the two. It is fate that brought them together. Here's the serum. Is he alright? Yes, he is. Thanks. Richard, hold on. I'll give you a shot now. Chris, Chris, here's a radio. Take it. Richard! No! Richard! Rebecca, be careful! Unfortunately, there is no way to save Richard's life regardless if you get him the serum on time, so he's destined to be killed in action. Richard! Richard! Are you... Rebecca, it's very dangerous out here. Will you come with me? I... I'd like to stay here a little bit longer. Okay, Rebecca. Can you use a gun? I'll look for the others. Protect yourself. Rebecca is found in Chris's scenario and acts as his companion and medic throughout the game. Chris, be careful, please! You can gain control of Rebecca two times in the playthrough. Wait a minute. Fucking wrong game! Shit! The first being after Chris finishes the job Richard started by driving off the snake.
Chris then becomes poisoned himself, and Rebecca must get to the serum room and back to Chris to alleviate the poison. Chris! Am I poisoned? Damn it, give me serum. I'm sure the serum must be there. I'll be right back. You all right? Yeah. What happened? The other is when Chris is fighting Plant 42, he gets captured by its strong tentacles, and Rebecca must weaken the plant by mixing the V-Jolt and applying it to the roots in the basement. This causes Plant 42 to lose its grip on Chris, so he can fight it off like a normal boss fight. Ah, <sighs> Little Miss Chambers. She plays an integral role with her medicinal knowledge, and is beloved amongst the anime girl fanboys with her innocent charm. She was given her own game as explained before, even though it was one of the lesser favored in the series, and last to see pre-rendered backgrounds and tank controls. She has always had a fond place in my heart because she's clueless and cute. One of her most notable and popular appearances in the game is when you find out that Chris can't read music, and Rebecca appears out of nowhere saying that she can play but needs to practice for a while. Ah, it's the Moonlight Sonata. Can you play? Wait, what is that? Chris, may I practice for a while? It's old-time Resident Evil fans that find the charm of Rebecca in this scene. See? Just relax and play. All right. Perhaps her incapability to play the piano right away is due in part to her nervousness around the other star's members, especially Chris as he is top tier in the group. Either way, we really get to see her true character in this scene and where majority of people fall in love with her character. A few other noteworthy moments in the game pertaining to Rebecca include the determination of what ending you get. If you choose not to take her with you by first encountering her in the serum room, she will stay in the mansion and be attacked by a hunter under the staircase. Chris! Thank God you're safe! I'm sorry that you were worried about me. We are in great danger. We must organize a search for the others and get the hell out of here. Understood? Yes, sir! It is your job to save her, and if you don't reach her in time, then she will be beheaded and you will not take her to the ending. The other is if you first encounter her outside the snake room with Richard and fail to bring the serum in time, she will be gone. When you return to the mansion for phase 3, you hear her cries and Chris freaks out that she's still in the house. What are they? It's Rebecca! She must be upstairs! In this case, she is in the botany room above. <laughs> Same deal. If you don't get to her in time, she dies like a motherfucker.
Her last endeavor is at the end of Chris's scenario. If you manage to save her from the hunters and get her to the end of the game, she is the one that triggers the self-detonation sequence of the mansion, creating one of the good endings. Oh my god, let's just forget that that ever happened, guys. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> Rebecca Chambers. So easy to crush on. Well, for a video game character. <laughs> Well guys, that concludes part 3 of my homage to Resident Evil Director's Cut. Today we took a look at Richard Aiken and the lovely Rebecca Chambers. Next time, I'll be wrapping up the remaining Stars Bravo team members with Enrico Marini, Kenneth J. Sullivan, Forrest Spare, and Joseph Frost. Guys, I really appreciate everyone for watching, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please remember to watch parts 1 and part 2 of my Resident Evil series. And finally, guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to The Baddest Dudes. Showtime checking out. Oh, that was great.